Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create a custom post type, and then we're going to change the URL of that post type. And we use this a lot for a lot of our customers. Let's say example, it's a property management company and they want to create a page for a specific property. Typically when you create a, a custom post type, it will say your URL slash property. If that's the uh, post type and then the name of the property. We want it to be the URL, you know, the site's URL and then slash A105. So let's get started. Here on the ideapro.io site that we use for um, testing and examples and stuff like that, um, we've got it open into the WordPress admin and we have our code open to the ideapro.io site. Now I use VS Code with a plugin for SFTP so that whenever I save a file, it uploads it to the site because I'm developing on the live site. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do this in a plugin. You can do it in the theme if you want to, um, if it's a custom theme, but typically if we're gonna do this, we wanna do it in a, in a plugin. So we're gonna create a new folder and for this, we're just going to call it idea pro property property. Okay. So that's our folder. And then we're going to create a new file. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. We're going to create a new file and it's going to be idea pro property.php. Okay. So in this, we're going to open up some PHP tags and we're going to put in the plugin name up here at the top. Plugin name is idea pro property plugin property why can't I spell that plugin and the description is just going to be example property plugin okay all right so that's literally all we need to create our plugin so we're going to go over to the site and we're going to go down here to plugins and there is our idea probe property plugin. So we're going to activate that. And of course it's not doing anything because we haven't put any code into the plugin yet. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to create that custom post type. So we're going to write a function that will register the post type. Okay. So let's do a idea pro register property post type post type that works. And then underneath this function, we're going to do an add action. If I spell it right, add action. There we go. And this action is going to be um, an init. And then our callback is going to be this function here. Okay. So then inside of this, um, we're going to write our uh, post type register post type man post type okay and then this first argument is going to be what our post type is going to be called so we're going to say property and it's all all lowercase and then this next argument is going to be an array and inside of this array we're going to create a labels property and that labels property is also going to be an array. And in that, we're going to create a property called name. And that name property, I'm thinking of something else. Property. Let's close this so we can pull this over a little bit. There we go. All right. So now our, our name of our um, our label and our name is property. And so then we're going to come outside of this array, do a new property and we're going to call it public. Um, and this is going to be a Boolean. So we're going to say true or false. We're going to make this true. The next one that we're going to do is, uh, a rewrite. Let's scoot over a little bit. And that one is going to be affiliate, all lowercase. OK, 
Okay, so to create the post type, that's all we need. Now you can expand on that and go into deeper labels about a new post type and all that kind of stuff. But this is the basic that we need for a post type. So if we come over, we've saved that, we come back over here and we come back to our dashboard. Now over here on the side, we have property as a post type. And we didn't set an icon and all that kind of stuff. I made another YouTube, uh, another video that goes over the uh, creating a custom post type that goes more into detail into that stuff. All right, so if we add a new property, I wanna show you guys, this is the old style of WordPress where it's the old editor, right? So if we wanna change that, if we wanna use this, that's fine. We can, there's stuff you want might wanna do with this. Um, but if we want to change that, we can come back over here and after this, we can put in another property called uh, show in rest and that is going to be true. Okay, so we'll save that. We'll come back over here and refresh the page and boom. Now we're using the new Gutenberg editor, which you probably should be using anyway. Okay, so now we have this new post type, all right? So we're gonna create a, one that's called test. So it's gonna be property test. And if you look over here, the ideapro.io slash property, and it's, of course it says auto draft, but we're gonna publish it. Okay, so now if we close this and we come back over, now it says ideapro.io slash property slash test. So if we go to that URL, we open it up, nothing here. And the reason why is because typically when you create a new post type, you need to go to settings and permalinks and then just update the permalinks. You don't have to change anything at all. You just update, hit save changes. And now if we come back over here to our page and refresh, boom, now test is working. So we just have to update permalinks. Now you can do that in the code and it's just flush the, you know, to flush the permalinks. And I can show that in another video. I'm not going to do that in this one. All right. So we're on property here and we go in and we have the test property and it has the extension there in front of the, um, the property name in front of the, in front of test. So now what we want to do is we want to eliminate that prefix property. Okay, so let's go back over to our code and we're gonna come down and create another function. And this one we're gonna call idea pro um, property remove slug. All right, okay. So then after this, we're gonna say add filter and it's gonna be post type link and then the second argument is going to be our property I mean our function here and then the priority is going to be 10 which is the default and then this next argument is going to be the number of um, arguments that we bring into this function so we're going to use two arguments and the first one is going to be post underscore link and the second one is going to be post all right so that's so that we bring in the post link and the post that's already loaded when you load the page all right so we're going to write an if statement here and we're going to add an else all right so in this if statement we need to say if post type is equal to property and if the post type uh, is public so we're gonna say if post post type is equal to, and it's gonna be property, because that is our post type here. So if it's equal to post type and post post status is equal to publish. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say post link is equal to str, and then we're gonna underscore replace and basically what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the slash and post, whoops, post type dot slash. 
uh, and then we're going to just make it a slash because we're removing, and I'll explain this in just a second, post link. Okay, so we're removing the front, the first slash and the last slash. And so if we're removing this first slash, we need to put in just a slash where it will be your domain, like ideapro.io, um, and then the name of the, the post type or the name of the uh, test, right? So you wouldn't have that slash. Um, but so we're going to do it that way where we add the slash in there. So post link. And then here we're going to return post link. Okay. All right. Else return post link. We could remove this down to the bottom, but we're just going to leave it like this for right now. So no matter what, we're going to return the post link. Um, so we could just take this else statement out and just say return post link and take this out. But I, I leave it in there because you may want to do an else else if and stuff. So uh, you may want to kill the site if something if something's not right. All right. So that's what we need to uh, remove that from the URL. Now we need to tell WordPress what we're doing because if we just do it like that. We come back over and we go to property and we come into property and now it's idea pro test. Again, if we open this up, nothing here. Even if we come over to permalinks and flush the permalinks again, we come back over and we refresh. It's still going to say nothing here, but it is showing that the test is showing up. So we've already fixed it to where we go property here. We've already fixed it so that it will remove it here in the URL. But now we need to tell WordPress, hey, we've removed the property uh, prefix. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna come over here to the code and we're gonna write a new function and we're gonna call it idea pro, uh, let's see post types parse yeah that's good enough all right and so what we want to pull in on this is the query so that's automatically loaded by wordpress whenever you load a page um, is the is the query so we want to pull in that query because we're going to change what that query uh, does all right so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement if not query is main query or not equals count. And I'll explain this here in just a second. Query, query or not is set dollar sign query query page okay so return so basically we're just saying um, if it's not the main query uh, if the count is not you know uh, is not equal to two if it's not a page then just return return it don't worry about it so now we're going to create a new if statement here and we're going to say if not empty and then we're going to do the oops, query query and then we're looking for the name name so if it's not empty we're going to find that name so in here we're going to set those post types all right so I'm going to show you guys really quick how you would set those post types, but we want to change it here in just a second. So set post type um, that's going to be the first argument and then the second argument is going to be array and that array is going to be post page and property. Okay, so that is the way you would set those post types because you want posts to show up, you want pages to show up, and you want properties to show up. 
But if you're using, if this is something that you're including on a pay, on a site that you didn't build, there may be other custom post types that you want to include in this. So you don't want to use just this. What we want to do is we want to write um, the find get the post types, the custom post types that are public, and include those custom post types here. So that's what we're going to do right here above this. Okay. So we're going to do post types. Whoops post types is equal to get post types. All right, so by default, it will return the um, all the post types that are public and not public and are included with WordPress and everything else. Uh, attachments, posts, pages, um, menu items, like all the different post types that are included. So we want to tell it there's only certain ones that we want. So we're going to create a variable called args. I can type it right. And that's going to be an array. And inside of that array, we're going to create um, a property uh, called public. And we're going to say true. And then we're going to create one that says underscore built in. I always try to I always almost spell that wrong and that is going to be false. So what that's doing is it's saying, we don't want the built-in um, uh, property types, or post types, sorry. We don't want the built-in post types because it will return stuff that we, we don't want to use. So then here, we're gonna add the post types for page and post, because that's typically the only ones that are public that you want to show. So post type, and then we're gonna say page, is equal to page and then we're going to duplicate that and we're going to say post and it's going to be equal to post and so then down here we're going to change all of this all of the array to post type let's call it post types post types that makes a little bit more sense so post types like that. Now we're telling it to use post types, page post, and any custom post types that we're pulling in. Uh, if we put that args in here, args, there we go. So we're putting this variable here in there as that first um, argument. All right, so then underneath this function, we're going to create an add action. And that add action is going to be pre get posts. And then the callback is going to be our function name here. So we're gonna put that there. All right, so now we have three functions, one that registers the post type, one that takes out the um, prefix of that post type from the URL. And then in this one, we're telling WordPress in this final function, we're telling WordPress, hey, we want to make sure that you know that property needs to be there, right? So we're going to save that. We're going to come over to our page and we're going to refresh and test is now found automatically. Boom. And the URL is ideapro.io slash test because now we've told WordPress, hey, this property needs to show up and it doesn't need to show the property URL. Hope that makes sense. If we go in and we create a new property, create a new property and use the example that I said in the beginning, A105, unit one, A105 in the properties, right? So then we publish and right here we have ideapro.io slash A105. And if we click on this and we open it, boom, there's A105. And this is the uh, one of the default themes here. So I, I use that because I want you guys to see that it does work on just any theme. So 2021 here, um, it's the one of the WordPress default themes. So very, very handy to be able to take that out of the URL. Hope this video helps you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please click the like button and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.